Hey, what's up guys? It is Slick or Slick Moff here, back again with another video. And the daily upload grind continues, so of course, give this video a like if you've been enjoying the daily uploads and want to see more. So, today I want to talk about um, E3 2018 for DC's video game lineup, or a lack thereof, question mark. <laughs> and this is really the topic of the video today. And I have a very bold statement that perhaps some people will get frustrated or upset with me saying it. But I think that E3 2018 is really DC's sort of last last resort. And I'm not just talking about their video game division. I mean DC as a whole. Now, I'm not saying that DC is going to fall into nothingness. Uh, okay, I understand that DC is a huge property. I'll always love DC. Uh, it's nothing against Marvel, but I'm just a DC guy. Um, with that being said, though, here's the problem that DC is facing. Is that the things that categorized it as being amazing and sort of attracting as many fans as it attracted in the early 2000s uh, when a lot of us were growing up, a lot of you know you watching this video today, um, are fading away. What are the things that made DC really successful for people that are around my age today? Well, I can say because I watch these things. The first of which was the Batman, Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, etc. Uh, incredibly popular in the early to mid 2000s. Um, that goes without explanation. I don't really need to elaborate on that very further. But if you look at it today, what is DC doing in the animation department? Um, a lot of people seem to think that their animation films are declining. I don't think that they're declining substantially per se, but they don't really have any of those amazing television shows. There is no Batman the Animated Series of today. Um, there really isn't any recurring animated series with DC superheroes that I'm aware of. Um... Certainly, there's films, and the films, there's one every couple of months. They're usually pretty good, in my personal opinion. Um, but that's not the same as a recurring television show that an entire generation is watching and talking about with Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series, to a lesser degree. Um, so, animation is one of the big tiers. And live-action films, you know. Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy came out, um, you know, right around... 2005 is when the first Batman Begins came out, 2008, and then 2009, Arkham Asylum came out. So that is the other two tiers. Uh, the second tier being live-action film. Um, you know, there's a lot of very classic Superman films. 1989 Batman is a big classic. And then you also have um, the Dark Knight trilogy for, you know, my age of people is, is what we grew up with. I grew up with the Christopher Nolan Batmans. And that was a very big thing to attract people to Batman in particular. Um, and then the third tier is video games. So, particularly the Batman Arkham games. Also, some DC LEGO games have been pretty popular. Like, um, you know, that, that, that's certainly been a part of it for more younger fans. Um, but mainly the Batman Arkham games. The Batman Arkham games have been played by millions and millions and millions and millions of people. Incredibly popular. One of the most successful video game franchises of all time. Um, you just can't deny the influence of the Batman Arkham games. So, those are the three sort of prongs of what's going on here that has really contributed to DC success. Now comics, DC comics have been excellent throughout all the 2000s in my opinion with some rough spots here and there. I love reading early 2000s DC comics, I think they're great. Um, DC Rebirth has been phenomenal. But the fact of it is, comic books are really only for the type of person that is watching this video and even then I've been amazed to kind of see the in, the number of subscribers that I have that actually don't read comics at all or have never even read a comic. So there's a, a ton of people that are fans of the Arkham games, fans of the movies, etc. that don't read comics. In fact, it is the majority. Most people that saw The Dark Knight have not aggressively read Batman comics. In fact, I would probably suggest that most people have never read one. Um, so the real success behind DC's brand is in movies, it's in video games, and it's in animated television shows um and what you see today is all three of those declining into pretty much nothing dc is trying to launch the this streaming service but that's not anywhere yet um who knows if that'll happen and who knows if that will really be mainstream you know batman the animated series was on primetime television it was on you know you know tv like you could just turn on the tv if you had regular cable you can watch batman the animated series if you really want to reach out to new fans and become something that's that's broadly popular across, you know, the, the masses, you can't have a subscription service where you pay $10, $12 a month just to have the access to watch these shows. Um, 
So that's going to be very difficult for DC to actually reach the level of popularity in the in the broader popular culture as they would like to. Um, so let's talk about live action movies now. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, where do I start with this? Um, the DCEU has had a little bit of a tumultuous past. I happen to have quite liked all of the DCEU movies up to this point. Um, I love BBS. Um, I think Suicide Squad's great. Really enjoyed it. Um, but I'm in the minority, and, and most people just... Uh, these movies haven't really caught on in the mainstream. Um, Harley Quinn has been a popular character. That's good. That's good. Um, I'm not saying that sarcastically. Like, that really is good. I, I want to see, you know, the DC brand thrive with the with the masses and not just the small sort of community of people that is listening to this type of video on YouTube because we are, you know, really the minority of the most, um, the most driven of the fans that are, you know, here talking about this. And if you're here listening to this six minutes in talking about how DC can be more popular. Okay. Anyway, so movies, but they're in limbo now. I mean, you have Aquaman coming out. They, they announce all these movies. Nothing is coming out. Nothing's really in production. The, the, the past year has just been news of like, oh, we cast this person. and the, I mean, Shazam's coming too, I think. Um, I don't suspect that any of these movies are going to be particularly uh, popular in the mainstream, though, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, I just don't think so. That's just my honest opinion in terms of Aquaman and, um, and Shazam. Um... Batman solo film, that's nowhere to be seen. I mean, that's like dead in the water. There's pretty much not been any news on that. Okay, so we're not really seeing any developments in the film area either, to be honest. And now let's talk about video games. The Batman Arkham games were huge for Batman's popularity. Um, I think that Batman has taken a popularity dip in the last few years. And I think it's pretty heavily correlated to the decline of the Arkham games. Not to de the decline in the sense that uh, people, you know, it's been less popular or successful, but they just haven't made a game for it. You know, 2015 was the last game. They wrapped up the trilogy, and that's fine. If they did not want to continue with the Batman Arkham games, I would say that is totally fine and understandable. Continue with something else. But they haven't done that. And DC has missed what I think is such an obvious move. What they should have done is establish a broader DC video game universe. Instead, what they did is they tried to copy Marvel with the um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe in movies. They tried to basically do the same thing, you know, one step behind Marvel, okay? It hasn't worked out for them particularly well. I would still like to see them do that, so I'm not saying it's a bad idea. But what I am saying is that they did not forge their own path in what was clearly an easy way to do it, and that is with the video game franchise. What they should have done is, Rocksteady's done with the Batman Arkham games, okay. Now we're gonna get these other developers. We're gonna get Sucker Punch, we're going to get, uh, you know, we're going to make our own studio, not WB Montreal. They haven't done anything. You know, they've been the least productive studio ever. They've been around for a decade and made one game. Okay, so not them because they don't – they're incompetent or something. I don't know exactly what's going on there. Or, or you know, WB's giving them – I don't know. Who knows? Okay, this is exactly my point though is that, you know, there's not really any developments for fans to be excited about. And, and what they should have done is right after Arkham Knight comes out in 2015 – you have a game lined up for, you know, 2016, maybe early 2017. Um, perhaps a Green Arrow game or or a Flash game. And then after that, you have Rocksteady working on a Superman trilogy of video games, just like the Batman Arkham trilogy. But you also have WB Montreal developing another Batman Arkham game. You have Sucker Punch or some other studio that you've brought in to make a Green Arrow game, to make a Flash game, etc. And you could create a broader, you know, DC video game universe. Of course, they did not go that route, and, you know, it's been three years since the last DC game, and there's not really been any news about it. Contrarily, on the other side of things, Marvel has, you know, commissioned Spider-Man PS4, which is going to be a huge hit, and I can't wait for it. Um, and then you also have, you know, uh, perhaps other games that are being developed there. Um, we've seen Telltale's Batman game. We've seen a LEGO DC Villains game, um, which... Once again, really, I think are going to and have failed to reach out of a very sort of strict fandom of, of you know, hardcore Telltale fans and also Batman fans. Um, those aren't really games that are going to propel into the mainstream of having, you know, everybody play them. What you need is a AAA Batman game. You need a AAA Superman game. And they should have been licensing these things years ago. And at E3 2018, 
they could prove me wrong. You know, WB could come out on, on the Sony conference and say, and basically prove everything wrong that I've said. They they do have a studio that's developing some other Batman game. Uh, or WB Montreal is working on a Batman game. Rocksteady's working on a Superman game. And then they recruited some other incredibly talented studio to make some other DC game. And there's going to be three DC games coming out year after year. You know, whatever. Batman's coming out, um, you know, later this year. And then the year after that, you have Superman. The year after that, you have Green Arrow. And then the year after that, it's another Batman game. And this whole thing. And when you have a cyclical sort of, you know, solution like that, you can actually create incredibly good games. Um, and it doesn't need to be on the strict timetable that I mentioned, but it's some level of consistency. Because I think the problem with DC's brand is that a lot of the characters have really actually faded out of memory. Um, you know, but Gotham is somewhat of a success to maybe have people think about Batman, but that's not really Batman, you know? It isn't really Batman. And I just think that they missed a huge opportunity. And my point being is, is it's something that I've noticed as a content creator. I've been paying attention to what people are saying online. And I think people are really just being disgr have become disgruntled with waiting. People sort of had this expectation, myself included, that something would be coming next from, you know, WB and DC imminently after Arkham Knight with the success they're in with Arkham Knight. And that we would be getting something, you know, after. Um... But instead, we get Batman Arkham VR, which is, like, kind of a Batman game. We get Batman Telltale, which is a Batman game. I don't mean to disgruntle it, but it's, like, you know, their own take on the Batman universe, right? It's not a AAA, full playable, free roam Batman game in the way that we think about them, okay? Um, and I think that perhaps we've seen a lack of commitment to the DC brand out of WB, which is really really astonishing given the success of their brand in lego games and in the batman arkham games it's actually quite confusing um i don't think there's any question that if they were to commission a green arrow game it would make a lot of money an era uh, you know a flash game you have the tv shows i think five years ago i would understand perhaps not enough people would know about these things but they're in the limelight now but you're going to miss your window of opportunity after a while people are just going to um the Arkham games are going to fade from memory. People aren't going to think about them as much anymore. And it's just going to have this like nostalgic little little glimmer in our in our brains. But, you know, Arkham Asylum came out like a decade ago. You know what I mean? I mean, the games will fade from memory. It's a fact. There's going to be a generation of people, in fact, kids now, that honestly the only game that has come out while they were even alive was Batman Arkham Knight. Or, you know, since they've had a console or whatever. And they remastered Asylum and City. They, they've tried to do things to, to keep it in memory. But really, the best way to do that and to really help the DC brand thrive is have new, great content. And we've seen perhaps a lack of commitment on WB's end to this goal. Which I think is quite alarming, to say the least. So, if I'm in charge of WB, I'm focusing on incorporating and improving all three of the tiers that I talked about today in terms of animated, regular, recurring television shows to reach out to a brand new audience of, of a younger generation that never had the Batman the Animated Series in the way that we all did. I would be focusing on live action movies. I would, you know, be working on Batman solo film. Surely they are, but they've been saying they have been for years. We've been hearing about this since, since BBS came out in March of 2016. Here we are, halfway through 2018. There's no development. They're not shooting anything. They're, they're just talking. It's just chatter. That's all it is. It's the same thing with, with video games, except even to a lesser degree, because there isn't even chatter. WB's not even officially announcing or, or saying anything that we're, like, working on a DC property. We have to go into the job searches just to understand that WB Montreal still is working on a DC game, which they are, because it says... In their job postings, we're working on a DC game, multiplayer game, and a single-player game. But, you know, the whole thing. But if it wasn't for that, you know, there's nothing that they're keeping us interested to be Montreal's. Twitter hasn't tweeted since the Batgirl DLC. There's nothing to sort of keep us engaged. And it will fade from memory. It will bite them in the butt. And I think it already has, substantially. So, if I'm WB, even, even if... I've done a horrible job planning the release of future DC games. I am going to have CGI trailers and I'm going to have teams aggressively working on DC games because 
this is, um, I think it is very much so of critical importance to the DC and WB brand for them to really have an announcement that amazes us at E3 2018. So that is the video, guys. I hope you all have enjoyed. Let me know what you think about this commentary in the uh, comment section below. If you agree, disagree, just let me know. Feel free to hit me with your honest opinion. I know perhaps some of you will disagree with this or this is kind of inflammatory, and I think that it is, perhaps intentionally. But anyway, guys, I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Once again, give it a thumbs up if you've been enjoying the daily uploads. And, of course, another video coming out tomorrow at around the same time. I'll see you guys there. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.